William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. The fellow in the driver's seat is always much better off, folks, especially if it's the mog wagon. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. A thing that defeats a confidential operator is his heart. I don't mean the wear and tear that comes of chasing creeps around the landscape. Heart. Meaning the way you get involved emotionally with a case or a client. Like a doctor gets involved with a patient or fights not to. The human angle. You go for it with a tear in your eye and a throb in your throat. And you're no longer working for a fee. No, sir. You're a dedicated sucker. Like I was in the case of Boxer Doyle, a ring champ of his day. My first introduction to the strange Boxer Doyle story began in the Times Square Penny Arcade. I'd stopped in for two bits worth of practice on the rifle range. And so I could check on whether a punchy-looking guy in an Eisenhower jacket had been dogging it after me as I suspected he was. The Eisenhower jacket was watching my marksmanship all eyes. I can shoot okay, huh, friend? Yeah, bullseye every time. There's a fly squatting on your ear. Watch how I do. I said you were good. You don't have to prove anything. 46th and Park, then west to Broadway, then south to here. Why so attached to me, friend? I was making up my mind. About? Whether you were the guy for the job, Craig. And? I'm throwing my business your way. Lay down the rifle, I'll tell you. I can't wait to hear. It's only an hour's work. Nothing complicated. Everything on the up and up. So much for the preamble. You represent me confidentially in an auction sale at the Phoenix Galleries tonight. What am I bidding on? A diamond belt that once belonged to Boxer Doyle when he was welterweight champ. Mrs. Doyle's put it up for sale. I want it. Why? Sentiment. Boxer Doyle's been one of my heroes. You can still bid on it yourself. You don't want the job? How much can I be losing? Five hundred. I pay for an hour's work. Get me the diamond belt. What's the ceiling, Mr. Uh... Bid up to 5000 if you have to. And if I'm outbid? I don't think so. It's been appraised at only 1500 Hmm. Sentiment is expensive. Come to a side. I'll count you out the door. Sentiment wearing a fancy price tag. I sat in at the Phoenix Gallery. There wasn't too much bidding competition. I'm bid $2,000, ladies and gentlemen, for the diamond belt. $2,000. Going once, going twice. $2,500. $2,500. I'm bid $2,500. Bid lively, please. $2,500. Going once, going twice. Are there any more bids? Fair warning. Sold to... Craig. Barry Craig. I turned the belt over to Mr. Mooney, collected my five bills, and wrote them off as a sentimental screwball. A weird deal, kind of, but legitimate on the face of it. So why push my imagination? Another day, another dollar, I figured it. That is, until Lieutenant Trav Rogers popped into Ranzini's pizzeria to drop a poison pellet in my minestrone soup. How's the uh, soup, Craig? Nine parts water, one part can, as usual. A bowl of minestrone, Tony. Mine company, Craig? The eats are public. Just don't jostle my elbow. I never do when a man's eating soup. Police protocol? Emily Post. No. Oh. I uh, came across an interesting item in the morning paper. There are Iranians in Iran. Back page. Where they put the fellas not at ease. I'm reading. Diamond Belt, once presented to Boxer Doyle by the Sports Writers Award Committee, was sold by the Phoenix Auction Galleries... By order of Mrs. Boxer Doyle. The belt was purchased by Barry Craig, whose successful bid was $2,500. You spend money, Craig. 
What's money for? Same morning paper. An inside page now. A muckraking column titled Sports Topics. I'm reading. Memo to the police. The auctioning of Boxer Doyle's diamond belt at the Phoenix Galleries last night prompts an old question. What did happen to Doyle? And who's covering up why? Who'd you buy that belt for, Craig? Why such a guess? You're not rich enough. Or sentimental enough. It's confidential, sorry. Think again. And eat soup? Boxer Doyle disappeared years ago. Dropped out of sight, dropped out of the world. The police handled it as a missing persons case. We got nowhere. Now, this business of the belt might be the first significant development in a sticker we've long given up on. You can hope. I want to ask your client about his expensive interest in the box of Doyle Diamond Belt, just on the chance. I'll ask him. Now, Craig... I owe him that much discretion, Trav. I'll ask him, then you ask him. I went to ask Mooney. A flea-bitten hotel in the East Twenties, where the desk clerk looked like he was dying to frisk you before letting you climb the stairs. Room 4A. I'd been there before, delivering the belt. Craig, you forgot something? Yeah, a footprint. I must have left it somewhere on the rug. Pick it up and go. Go where you're going? You use your eyes a lot. I'd be blind not to see your suitcases packed and ready. I'm moving downstairs. Fourth floor is too high up. I get nosebleeds in altitude. You're going to turn out to be a pest. I am? Look, you've been paid. Generously. No quarrel. Then ring off. Go look for your next job. This thing keeps building, and I've got my next job. Mysteries fascinate me. I made a mistake throwing work your way. Craig, what do you want? Answers. What's your real interest in the missing box of Doyle? I'm only interested in this belt. Standing pat on your story, huh? People collect General Grant's platoons and John L. Sullivan's gloves. You've got a personal hero. And you're crazy sentimental. Okay, then. Let's go. That sounds like police headquarters. I promised you to a lieutenant if I got nowhere. You object? You tell me. You object? How'd you do it? Sleight of hand? I ought to kill you. Good you're fighting the impulse. You park here while I move downstairs. When you come to, Craig, change your thinking. I'll make a sincere effort. I won't turn the gun around the next time. Ooh. There was no use trying to change my thinking. When I came to, the only thought in my head was how to get out of a locked closet. Get out before I died of suffocation. At headquarters, Trav Rogers was overjoyed at the lump on my head. Craig, the violence means something. My aching head. It means there's life in a case that's been in the doldrums for years. Again, I say you hope. Go to it, Craig. What does that mean? Find out what happened to Boxer Doyle and who did it to him. Come again? Now, Craig, don't be coy. You want me to work up a case the police gave up on? That's right. On whose behalf? What client? Me. You're representing me very confidentially. The department has a stake in it. Nothing less say than, than its honor. We've been pilloried by the press, sniped at by columnists, abused by a thousand sports fans who love Boxer Doyle and who idolize his memory. Let's see the file on Boxer Doyle. No. Our files merely tell the story of a failure. Then where do I start? There are two important principles after Boxer Doyle himself. Mrs. Doyle and Sam Spiro. Spiro was Doyle's manager and close friend. Barry, I won't forget this favor. Don't forget one other thing. What's that? My fee, client. Want to commit yourself now? Why not? The best dinner in town at 21. Steak, caviar, champagne. Corona, Corona cigars bigger than chimney stacks. All on me if you come through. And if I flop? Hot dogs and an orange drink. On you. I'll take the proposition up with my ulcer.
Mrs. Boxer Doyle. Wilma Doyle had a henna bleach and the telltale look of an ex-showgirl a little too old and frayed around the edges for the chorus line. What's this visit about, Mr... Uh... Craig, Barry Craig. Hmm. I explained over the phone. I'm a police operative wondering about the whereabouts of Boxer Doyle. Isn't it a little late to be wondering? Maybe. I'll concede that when I say hello to his corpse. But you talk to me. I've done nothing but talk to the police for years. But never to me. I'm fed up talking. He's gone. He went out for a comic book one night and never came back. Did he leave you comfortably fixed? All the gold I could carry in my teeth. Doyle was a fast man with a buck. He even tried handing me cigar coupons for table money. <laughs> Look around you, copper, and tell me this dump reminds you of Buckingham Palace. Almost. I missed the crystal chandeliers. An ex-world champ, Doyle made barrels of dough. And salted it away where I couldn't touch it. Who could and can? Sam Spiro, his manager. Sam's got the power of attorney over everything Doyle owned. Except me. And that diamond belt you auctioned off the other night. <laughs> Doyle gave it to me in a weak moment. All in all, there was no love loss between you and Boxer Doyle. We fought all the time. Doyle scored tales that don't appear in the records. Why would he pick up and disappear? Whams in his head toward the end of our happy marriage. Doyle was 90% off his rocker. I slept with a gun under my pillow in case he went berserk. What had him down? His career was behind him. He'd hung up his gloves. Sour, disappointed, and depressed. Hey, you ought to be all out of questions. One more. Who's in the bedroom? What, what kind of a stupid... The door's open a little. It wasn't when I came in. Who's getting an earful? My boyfriend. Boyfriend? Is it a crime? Doyle walked out here nearly eight years ago. Steve, come out and be introduced. This is Steve Marcy. Steve Barry Craig. A pleasure. It isn't mutual. Steve! Shut up, Wilma. He's not here for your good. I got an earful, Craig, and a line on your angle. Which is? To weasel and browbeat Wilma out of her rights as Doyle's widow. Said rights being? An accounting of every penny Sam Spiro holds of Doyle's and Wilma's right to cash in Doyle's insurance. If Doyle's dead. He's dead. Legally, anyhow. Enough time has elapsed. You're petitioning the court to have Doyle declared legally dead? Wilma is. Oh. I don't like that wise guy, oh. You're so full of dislikes, Buster. And ready to demonstrate. Oh. Ooh. Nice right cross. Was it just knuckles or brass knuckles? My bare fists. You're a boxer? I'm a boxer. <laughs> the lady's preferences run on a single track. Get out, Craig. Sure. But not the way I am. I don't mind nursing my jaw. But not my back. <laughs> when the contender comes to, tell him he's a sucker for an uppercut. I'm sorry, Mr. Craig. Skip it. I'm out to weasel you, he said. That's both true and false, Wilma, depending on how the facts develop. A guy drops out of the world, and his deserted wife turns out to have a profit motive and an eager boyfriend with an itching palm. A situation like this pops an ugly word into my head. Murder. On the street, a few doors down from Wilma's tenement palace, somebody blew over to me with the evening mists. Mind company, Craig? No, provided you don't say goodbye to me in locked closets. Keep walking. I sense a gun, but I don't see it. You've seen me draw? Yeah, regular sleight of hand. Jumping me would be a mistake. I never want that spelled on my tombstone. How much, Craig? How much for what? For you to hop a plane to Tijuana. What's there? High lie. Never played it. You're bright. You'll learn. Is it expensive? Only if you lose. What's the maximum I can lose? Five grand. When I go, I go. Eight. You'd blow me to an eight grand vacation? You got rings under your eyes. Keep getting hit on the head, you'll lose your mind. That's no joke. You need to knock off. Rest up. Stick your hand out for the dough. You really want me to forget about Boxer Door? No changing the subject. We were talking about eight grand. But what if I'm busting with curiosity about Boxer Doyle? Craig, don't be funny. No fooling. I'm still kid enough to be glory struck over famous sports figures. 
Enough to be sentimental, like you're sentimental. You don't want the dough? What good's my sitting in Tijuana with my mind on something else? I want to know what happened to Doyle. Where did he go? And if murdered, who killed him? And where is the corpus electi? Walk ahead of me. Keep walking. I'm going to get shot in the back? Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe today. Maybe tomorrow. Walk. Walk away from a gun. You don't have to feel the lead to feel shot. You imagine it. The sudden burning heat in your spine. So hot it's ice cold. But Mooney didn't shoot. I just walked away from him into the fog. I finally located Sam Spiro in Kelleher's gymnasium. Collodion and Arnica. The place That's smelled the like a man. surgeon's Come office. Watch that left. Spiro left. was watching That's one it. of his pugs work out. Uh, Sam Spiro! Uh, whatever it is, saving, I'm busy. Your boy will keep while we talk. Look, look, I told you. Uh, hey, who are you? Barry Craig. Process server? Confidential investigator. Is that the same as a cop? It is. I say what you mean. If you'll transfer your interest from your meal ticket a minute, I will. Hey, I'm not under arrest. Depends on what's on your conscience. Come on. Watching the kid will only aggravate you. You think he's that bad? His arms are too short. Come over where we can talk. Make it snappy. Okay. Where's the body buried? Whose body? Boxer Doyle. What makes you think Doyle's dead? I think you killed him so you could keep the dough he let you hold for him. <laughs> or you blew the dough in. The stock market, the horses. <laughs> so you knocked off Doyle to avoid an accounting and prosecution. <laughs> when you stop hiding behind a counterfeit lab... <laughs> Doyle's as alive as you. Flattery won't help you. What makes you so sure he's dead? Eight years. Where does a celebrity keep himself eight years? On an island. What island? Samoa. Doing what? Painting. He got fed up with people. He bought a paint box and a roll of canvas and swam to an island. Where else does he keep himself? On a mountaintop. He grew a beard and he's writing a story of his life. He's in touch with you? All the time. We're like Corsican brothers, Doyle and me. We communicate all the time. Uh, uh, give me the word I can't think of. Telepathy. That's it, Telepathy. Every night, promptly 11 p.m., there's a message on my wavelength. What does it say? It says, Sam, why can't people mind their own business? Signed, Boxer. How much loot of Doyle's are you holding? I'll remember to count it sometime. When's Doyle reappearing from wherever he is? That message I ain't received yet. Now I gotta get back to my boy. Yeah. Better go wipe his nose or he'll begin bawling for his mama. <laughs> Over steak burgers and curlicue potatoes, I ran over what I had with Trav Rogers. So Doyle's both alive and dead. Depending on whose angle you see it from. Doyle alive, but on the world, incognito somewhere. Keeps Spyro in charge of Doyle's assets. And keeps Mrs. Doyle out in the cold. In a crisis, what do you bet Spyro even produces phony picture postcards from Doyle? And Mrs. Doyle's calling Doyle dead for her own practical reasons. Insurance, enforcing a widow's legal accounting from Spyro. Either one could have murdered Doyle and disposed of the body. Either one, or their boyfriend Steve. Or the mysterious Mooney. Mooney puzzles me. He was the gunman who originally did the dirty work? For Wilma or Spyro? Either one. And now Mooney's busy seeing that the case doesn't get off the ground, blow hot. I could buy it. One thing didn't stick out. What thing? The diamond belt. Mooney's reason for the purchase. Yeah, there I'm stumped. Where do you go from here? For uh, a ride, I think. A ride? Shh. Parked on the street side of the plate glass. Eyeing me and waiting for me. But don't look now. Who? My shadow. The Eisenhower jacket. Mooney. I'm going out. To nab him? No. To give him all the rain he wants. I've got a feeling he's finally provoked enough to tell me something. But the risk is... He could have killed me twice, but didn't. I'll leave the tip. The check's all yours, Lieutenant. Lieutenant. <laughs> 
I didn't wait to be coaxed to take a ride. I guessed you were waiting to show for me, Mooney. You've got nerve, Craig. You've noticed, huh? I'm gone. You sure made a study of me. Ah, uh, I won't even bother asking our destination. I'll trust you. Our destination turned out to be the home of a man whose shingle outside a big rambling estate read, Dr. Otto Steiner. A round little nervous man, Steiner, with fluttering hands. It was plain to see that Steiner didn't relish the upcoming session. Tell Craig about Boxer Doyle, Doc. Tell Craig, yes. I, I treated Boxer Doyle. Get to it, Doc. Tell Craig the condition Doyle was in. Uh, depressed to a manic state. His vitality, the splendid energies and physique that had carried him so far in his Spell career... Spell it out in a word, Doc. Well, Doyle had a wish to self-destruction. He, he told me he had attempted his own life on two occasions. That, that is about all, I suppose. That wraps it up. Not so fast, Mooney. Doc, Doyle was in treatment when he disappeared? Yes. How long had you known Boxer Doyle? Oh, a very long time, Mr. Craig. I was his personal physician and friend for a long time before his breakdown. Let's get out of here, Craig. Kind of a fast shuffle, Mooney. Is it deliberate? I said let's get out of here. Mooney tacked on a postscript to the doc's testimony over drinks in the nearest roadside tavern. A small beer for me and lots of drinks for Mooney, like a guy drowning a painful memory. You heard the doc, Craig? What were you to Doyle? My name isn't Mooney. Barley. Trainer Barley. Trainer Barley? <laughs> Fame rubs off. I was a ranking contender once until Doyle flattened me. Sorry, I can quote you baseball batting averages and pitches. When records. Doyle stopped me, I joined up with him. As Doyle's trainer. As Doyle's friend. You were really close to Doyle, huh? I worshipped the guy. When Doyle went, the book closed for me, too. Now you know why I bought in that belt. Yeah. Now I know. Now you know why I didn't fit it in myself. You didn't want to be identified as Trainer Barley. I didn't want any publicity on it. Sob stuff in the papers. The $64 question, mister. My advice still is, don't ask it, Craig. Do like I've been coaxing you all along. Cancel out, take a vacation. Forget Doyle. The $64 question, mister. You'll be stuck keeping a secret. Maybe. You blab what I tell you. Make like a cop, disgrace Doyle, and I'll kill you. Doyle tried twice, the doc said. There was a third try. You're saying that Boxer Doyle committed suicide? Right in front of me. On a cabin cruiser fishing off the Florida Keys. Doyle was better, I thought. Laughing... Cracking jokes, working on a suntan. I, I took my eyes off him. He went over the side. Period. Six hours later, I found him washed against the rocks. I buried him at sea in the middle of the night. Your reason? What do you think? Disgrace. Your word, disgrace. Suicide was a disgrace. Doyle was a heroic legend. You didn't want any tarnish on it. Not then or now. So close your file on Doyle, Craig, and live. Come on, I'll drive you back to town. No, thanks. I'll stick around here for a while. Way out here? What for? Tie on a bun, maybe. Like you did. What are you up to, Craig? I could be sad and sentimental... Like you're sad and sentimental. Good night, mister.
When Trainer Barley tore himself away, I got on the phone. Headquarters, relay this message to Lieutenant Trav Rogers and quick. He's to meet Barry Craig at Dr. Otto Steiner's in Wentmore, out in Nassau County, as fast as he can make it. Leaving the tavern to hitch a ride to Doc Steiner's, Trainer Barley tried to make good on a threat. Barley shooting from the concealment of roadside bushes. I'd need surgery and electric therapy to recover the use of my left hand. I found my own bush. I warned you the secret would be hard to keep, Craig. Call a lie by its right name, mister. I saw you go to the phone. Now come and get the rest of my gun. I order you to surrender, Barley. You're not in the penny arcade now, Craig. No shooting at sitting ducks. Barley, it's a lost cause. The legend's not half the size of your crazy sentimental fanaticism. Give up, Barley. I'm finding the range, Craig. I've found the range. <laughs> your voice was the range, Barley. Crawl into the open on your hands and knees or I'll shoot to kill. Later, after patching up Barley's leg wounds in a private hospital behind Otto Steiner's residence, Trav Rogers and I got to meet Boxer Doyle in the flesh. Gentlemen, this is Boxer Doyle. A shrunken man, half as big as the sports world remembered him. He sat in a chair facing a window, vacant to his surroundings, deaf to our voices. Around his waist was a diamond belt held in place by pins. This was the secret Trainer Barley risked his life to keep? And Sam Sparrow. Only his wife knew nothing. A rare disease of the spine. Malignant. Doyle fell away bit by bit to what you see. How long, Doctor? Not long. He has nothing left. Only his magnificent fighting heart. Trav. Yes, Craig. When the story gets out, I'm taking over. As crazy fanatic as trainer Barley. Any tarnish on the legend of a great champ, I'll break heads. Good night, folks. See you next week. have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, The Deadly Fight, was written by John Robert. Next week, it's the strange story titled The Very Odd Job, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, I'm hired to deliver a puppet, watch a girl faint, discover a vintage murder, and realize that the only thing that's black as it's painted is a coffin. See you next week, folks. Featured in the role of Mrs. Doyle was Fran Collin. Barry Craig, starring William Gargan, was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is Don Pardo speaking. Now, Robert Montgomery presents something different in news analysis on NBC.